In the swimming pool, there's a structured environment with clear visual guides. Floating lane lines and lines on the bottom of the pool are easily visible. You might even have a swim coach on deck to provide feedback. While this structured environment is great for learning and practicing, it can also lead to complacency. Swimmers often become too relaxed and let bad habits creep into their stroke without even realizing it. But out here in the open water, it's a different story. No markers, no lines, often limited visibility, it's just you and the vastness of the water. In this unpredictable environment, your swimming technique becomes your only guide and efficient stroke is crucial. If you meander off course, you're not just wasting energy and adding distance to your swim, you risk becoming separated from your group, swimming too far from shore, and potentially putting yourself in danger. To improve your freestyle stroke, prevent arm crossover, and reduce the risk of shoulder injury, focus on keeping your arms parallel in the front quadrant. If you're unfamiliar with the term front quadrant, don't worry. I have a video explaining it in detail. There's a link for it in the description below. Lie face down in the water, fully extend both arms shoulder width apart, and then align your thumbs with your forearms. Now, let's fine-tune this parallel arm position. Look at your hands and slightly adjust your arms so that your shoulders are above your elbows and your elbows slightly above your wrists. It's a subtle shift, but it's crucial for an efficient stroke. Notice how my fingertips are about chest deep. This is the ideal position for your arms when you fully extend in freestyle. Practice holding this position while flutter kicking. This will help build muscle memory and solidify the correct arm angle. It's a small adjustment that can make a big difference in your speed, power, and efficiency. To help visualize the parallel arm position, imagine swimming over train tracks at the bottom of the pool. Keep each arm over a separate track as you flutter kick across the pool. This drill builds muscle memory for the correct arm position. Repeat it often and remember to breathe consistently. Once you feel comfortable holding your arms in the parallel position, take one freestyle stroke. Do this slowly, ensuring the pulling arm moves along the imaginary track. At the same time, focus on keeping your lead arm straight and over its own train track. Use the underwater recovery and extend into the parallel position before pulling with your opposite arm. Crossing your arms over the center line is a recipe for inefficient swimming, shoulder pain, and even injury. By learning the parallel arm drill, you're investing in a more efficient, powerful, and pain-free swimming future. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it, every single one of you. If you could do me a huge favor, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I have more Learn to Swim videos coming to you in the near future, and I'll see you soon. When your body hangs low in the water, you create drag. You kick and pull faster and faster, yet your forward momentum slower and slower. Your heart pounding, redlining, you made it across the pool, but you're mentally and physically drained. When your body is parallel with the surface, drag is reduced and you'll swim easier and more importantly, faster. Pressing the buoy is the process of leaning on air-filled lungs to pivot legs up. To start this drill, take a deep breath and hold it. Lie face down on the surface of the water and let arms hang straight down. Pull stomach in and keep it there for the entirety of this drill. Start a slow flutter kick for horizontal balance. With significant pressure, lean torso down into the water. Doing this will pivot legs up. Release a little bit of downward pressure from torso. Body will level out at the surface. 
If too much downward torso pressure is released, legs will sink again. Further, air-filled lungs are floating buoys of support. If too much air is expelled, the body will sink. Repeat this drill Repeat over this drill and over. over Repeat and over. this drill over and over. The doggy paddle is a key front quadrant drill that improves your stroke. Practicing it correctly helps maintain extension in your reach arm, ensuring a steady, streamlined body line, and promotes proper timing in the catch phase of your opposite arm. Here are the components of the doggy paddle. Hands should be flat with fingers slightly spaced apart. This increases surface area. Hand forearm alignment. Align hand with forearm. Maintain this alignment to catch more water, resulting in a stronger, more efficient pull. Elbow on top. Extend arms and place hands flat on the pool deck's edge for stability. Focus on rolling one arm at a time, bringing the elbow on top. Repeat individually. Once comfortable with the motion at the wall, try performing the arm roll away from it. In an open area away from the wall, fully extend one arm and keep the hand level with the palm facing down. Roll arm to bring elbow on top while maintaining a flat level hand. This positioning guides your arm into the correct alignment for the catch. Start flat in the water. Fully extend your arms in the front quadrant. Begin a steady flutter kick for forward movement. Lift your head above the water and keep it there. Notice that your hips and legs will start to drop and hang lower in the water. Your body is adjusting to balance the weight of your head. Limited body roll. This elevated head position limits the body's side to side horizontal rotation. Breath control. Remember to breathe continuously. It's crucial for steady oxygen flow, especially when learning new moves. Catch position. Begin with a fully extended arm. Start rolling the arm to position the elbow on top. Simultaneously, move the arm down. While you're moving the arm down, continue the arm roll to move the forearm and hand inward towards the body center line. Use the side of your head as a reference to ensure your hand doesn't extend beyond it. Aim for a 90 to 120 degree angle between the forearm and the upper arm. Once the catch arm is vertical with the hand below the shoulder, transition the movement. The elbow continues moving and presses against the body, activating the lat muscles. At the same time, the forearm and hand begin to move into position for recovery. Arm timing. Begin the catch phase when the fingertips of the opposite recovering arm are in line with the wrist. Recover arm into the full extension of the reach before the opposite arm is in the full vertical catch position. Recover arm into the full extension of the reach before the opposite arm is in the full vertical catch position. The two beat kick pattern, one flutter kick per arm pull. Kick the right leg as the right arm enters the power phase, then kick the left leg as the left arm enters the power phase. This pattern aligns each kick with the corresponding stroke. With your head up and hips and legs lower in the water, sinking the arm pull and kick in the doggy paddle becomes more intuitive. For the two beat kick, gauge your core muscles. To better understand this, try the doggy paddle drill using the dolphin kick. Perform one dolphin kick for each arm pull. Start the dolphin kick as your arm enters the power phase. Maintain core engagement throughout. You might quickly feel a tingling or burning sensation in your core. 
This indicates that you are effectively using your core muscles. Let's return to the two beat kick. This time, apply the same core engagement used during the dolphin kick. Scope out the marker buoys and visualize your swim route. Observe the current's direction and strength. When crossing a current, don't swim straight across. The current will likely push you downstream, forcing you to swim upstream to reach the buoy, a waste of precious energy. Instead, aim slightly upstream of the buoy. You can even pick a landmark further upstream as a secondary guide. As you swim, keep sighting both your target buoy and that upstream secondary point, adjusting your body angle as the current pushes you. Once you reach the buoy, swim around it and head to the next one. The more you practice, the better you'll become at navigating the open water. Hi everyone, welcome to this video where I'll demonstrate the freestyle catch and how its components work together to position your arms naturally without force. Step 1, body rotation. Take a deep breath and hold it for this drill. Lay flat in the water with arms to the side. Start a slow flutter kick and keep looking straight down. Press the buoy to level your body with the surface. If you don't know how to do this move, there's a really good video I made called Pressing the Buoy. The link for it is in the description below. Use the flutter kick to rotate your body 45 degrees to each side. Look straight down, keep your head centered, and do not rotate your head with your body. Rotate to each side with three kicks, emphasizing the one kick as the power kick. You're using that power kick to rotate your body to the opposite side. Maintain continuous motion without stopping in the center. Body rotation is crucial for freestyle swimming. Step 2, arms extended. Take a deep breath and hold it for the entirety of this drill. I lay flat on the water surface with arms fully extended forward. Move arms down to a 45 degree angle to relieve shoulder tension. Start a slow flutter kick for balance. Press the buoy to pivot your legs up and keep your body level with the surface. Use the flutter kick to rotate your body 45 degrees to each side. As was done in the previous section, do the rotation of three kicks. Use the one kick as the power kick to rotate you to the opposite side. The two and three kicks are stabilizer kicks and we'll get into further detail when I do a video on the freestyle kicking patterns. Keep your head centered, look straight down. Do not rotate head with your body. Step three, complete integration. Extend arms at a 45 degree angle down into the water, hands shoulder width apart. The arm on the side where your shoulder rotates toward the surface is the catch arm. Simultaneously, the opposite arm on the side where the shoulder rotates downward becomes the reach arm. Rotate your body to naturally move one arm into the catch position and the other arm into the reach position. Stabilize the catch arm from the shoulder to the elbow. Allow this part of the arm to rotate with your body and at the same time, with little effort, Move the forearm down as the body rotates. 
do not forcefully lift your elbow. The rotation of your body drives the catch and reach movements efficiently. Pull, push. You're extending your lead arm. Extend as far as you can. Like, rah! Shoulders above your elbow, elbows above your wrist, wrist above your fingertips. A lot of people make the mistake when they reach and extend, they go up like this. It pushes your legs down and you have to constantly rebalance your body and that takes energy. Hey, wait, wait, don't leave yet. It's been so wonderful spending this time with you. Please check out one of my other videos right here. Swimming right to my other video.